I came out there preaching the truth about the four corners of the earth. Alright, but the truth and sincerity of your hearts is for the love of the gospel. That's a verse from Maria of uh, the Venus, Gary and Deanna Kent. Alright, and um, this lesson today is going to be about a response that uh, the Apostle Kabar did that you can find on his page, Venus Mailbag Extra. Um, I believe it's called GMS uh, Walk and Talk 8, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's the name of his page. But the addition is uh, Mailbag Extra. That's the channel. That's the episodes that he have going. But anyway, on that channel, on the Possible Bars channel, he said that um, the video is titled The Incident at the Park. Or a, a Incident at the Park. Or An Incident at the Park. So he ran into a guy, and then the guy told him, long story short, that um, it's amazing how you guys are so, have all this vast knowledge, and you guys are so humble with it, all right? And I wanted to do a video on that, just, just coming from a, you know, just a different spectrum of what the apostle said, all right, just getting a couple of scriptures, all right? And this is just, you know, my, this is just uh, uh saying the same thing the apostle said, but just remixing it into my um excuse me yeah man like like i said this is the same thing the apostle was saying you know it's, it's good you gotta be in this truth is to be humble all right that's the way to be in this truth all right and i'm just gonna get some more priest some more precepts to back that up all right um it's the book of uh Ephesians 2 and 8. all right but first and foremost John, it says, a man can leave nothing except to be given to him of the Father, all right? So this is a gift given to us by our Lord, all right? Starting with the Father, Yahweh, then he was given it to Yahweh Shai, and then Yahweh Shai has his elect. All right, this is a gift given unto us, man. Like, that's like Apostle Tar says, I mean, it's like, yeah, like Apostle Kabar said, this is a, uh, this is not of ourselves. So what room do you have to be prideful? All right, he actually said that in the video. And I'm just getting this. is the Ephesians 2 and 8, and this is a gift. For by grace you are saved through faith. All right, because we have faith that the Lord is going to come down here and, and deliver us if, you know, if we do what he, if we do what he commanded us to do. And and the fact that he, the fact that he's going to do that, all right, is, is grace because we have all, fell short of the glory of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh all right? And I'm going to get into that later. But it says, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. See? That not of yourselves. See, it's not of ourselves, because if someone, um, the one, when I read the scripture, I think about um, when you live with someone else in their house, all right? You live with someone else in their house, and especially when you're grown. All right, when you when you when you're um, I'm not gonna say grown. That's not the right word to use. Right? When you're an adult, all right. When you're an adult, and you live with someone else in their home, you you um you be humble. All right, you uh you uh so that you try to stay on their good side, so to speak. All right, because it says that not giving of yourselves, because you didn't give yourself this gift. When you stand with somebody in their house, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't put that thought in their head to let you let them stay with you, all right, or let let you stay with them, because you want to stay on their good side, because it is it is not you that's keeping you staying there, it's them, all right. That's just what I think about when I when I read it, because it says um, it is it is a gift of God, all right, and that that gift, what I'm liking it to, is the person that person lets you stay in their home, all right. Cause I know me personally, I live from I live from house to house a couple of a couple of years in my life, you know. And when I live house to house, I would do certain things around the home to to stay on the to stay on the um good side of who whomever it be that I'm staying with. All right, I would do certain things to make it easier on them, you know, without them having to ask me. I would I would always you know be compliant to what they ask me to do because I'm under their roof, you know. And I'm just liking it, I'm just liking it, liking it into a parable, you know. But, like I said, it says, uh, for by grace you are saved through faith, 
and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god see it is the gift of god all right and this this gift that the lord has given to us it, it is uh it is his all right um and it can it, as easily as the lord has given it to us it can be taken it taken away from us and that's that's exactly what the apostle said uh, in this video he said just as easy as the lord has given it to us he can easily just as easily easily take it away all right and i'm not just saying that I man I'm, I'm i'm getting scriptures to back it up all right because he he has done that with previous people in the scriptures just one prime example all right king saul had once had the lord's spirit up upon him all right but the lord took it away from him all right this is Saul, uh, psalms 51 and 11 all right i'm gonna read 11 then i'm gonna jump up two verses actually i'm gonna jump up two verses it says psalms 51 and 11 so i can psalms 51 and 9 hide my face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities actually Time right, start at five. Psalms fifty one and five. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. See, King David is saying that you know I am flesh. And as long as I am flesh, I am shaping in iniquity, which he is right. All right. Um, when, you, when you go jump into the book of Genesis. All right. It says. Uh, when you go to Genesis, the sixth chapter. It says. Six and one. Six and three. Genesis 6 and 3 says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Alright? So that lets you know that the man the man is flesh, and in that flesh, uh the demons play on his flesh to have us go off. As it is written as it is written, the just man falls seven times, but get us back up again. Alright? So this flesh, you know, it, it causes us to commit sin. All right. From there, I'm, I'm I'm jumping around a little bit, but I'm still on the same point. All right. King King David just said I'm shaping in iniquity. All right. And the Lord can do do away with us at any time. Like I said, you are you're standing in His house. You stand in the Lord's house, like the parable I gave in the beginning. You stand under the Lord's roof. All right. You got to do everything you can to remain on His good side. You got to do everything He asks you to do. You got to do it to the utmost, all right? You got to handle it with care. And the, the apostle went into that healthy sense of pride, all right? Uh, when you do work, you, you handle the work with care. You don't just slop over it, all right? You don't just do it just because he told you to. and just do a, do a shit job. Excuse my French. Excuse my language, all right? But you handle it with care, man. All right, you actually put uh, life into it, life into your work. Are right, you let your work speak for yourself? You know, let your work be a reflection of you. All right, but uh, it says the Lord shall. It says the Lord said, "My spirit shall not always strive with man." That word "strive" means to judge, to judge or rule over. It says to judge, to contend, to plead, as as to act as judge, minister, to plead the cause, to execute judgment, requite. So to govern, basically. So the Lord's spirit is not always going to govern over us because we are flesh. All right. In the book of Kings, real quick, uh, First Kings eight and forty six, because I had this all lined up, all right. Because I this 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 lesson hit me heavy, you know. This First Kings eight and forty six. King Solomon said, "What it says, if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not." See, it says that in parentheses. That's the point of this old precept. I'm gonna read the whole thing. It says, "If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not." And thou be angry with them, and deliver them into the enemy, so that they carry them away captives into the land of their enemy far and near. All right. 
And that's what happened to us, man. You know, we got carried away captive to a land far and near. Far nor uh far or uh we got to carry away far, you know, instead of near. But anyway, the point was that for there is no man that sinneth not. All right, because there is no man that sinneth not. We have all sinned, man. You know, we have all fell short of the glory of Yahweh by Shem Shop Back to the Psalms. Psalms 51 5. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and my sin did. It says, and in, 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 in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward. Thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. It says, Purge me in hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. It says, how do you be washed? How do you be purged? With the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahusha, because that is life. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. All right. That's the the book of um, that's the book of uh, John six and six three. But um, keep going. It says, make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide my face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. All right, hide my face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Like, man, Lord, forgive me for all the things that I have done. And that's what the Lord is going to do. All right, because it said what? Uh, Blessed is the man who the Lord have not imputed sin. So the Lord is going to pardon our, our iniquities, the ones that want to do right in the future. Because it's all through the New Testament. It says, uh, do you believe that uh, Yahweh Shai told the people that he healed? Do you believe that I can heal you? He said yes. You know, they would say yes. And then he would heal them and then he would go and tell them, Go and go ye and send ye no more. Alright? So he's gonna he's gonna clean us white, alright, and wash away all of our all of our iniquities. Alright? Uh just a quick precept for that is uh Isaiah. It's the book of this the book of Isaiah chapter one, verse nineteen or eighteen. Isaiah one and eighteen. It says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. All right, so the Lord is going to wash our sins. You know, those who believe on him, you know, the, the, the ones that do the work, the ones that um, uh, do righteous work, I, was, I should say, the righteous work, the, Lord, the ones that do righteous work so the Lord can look upon their righteous work and say he tried, you know, he gave his best, he gave his effort, you know, so, to, so that I can forgive him, all right, because like I said, we stand on the Lord's roof, man, so we got to do all that we can to stay on his good side, to stay on his best side, we got to do our best and above our best to stay on his good side, but we will slip up, we will slip, because you are flesh, but you repent, you ask him for forgiveness, and you continue to do your best, all right, it says create me and clean me clean it says create in me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy holy spirit from me so you take not thy holy spirit from me all right we gotta pray to the lord and ask him not to take the spirit which he has given to us all right because the lord just as freely as he has given it to us he can take it back all right this is the book of uh the fat uh, I wanted to get in pride because pride is when the Lord starts to take it away from you. Then that's when pride starts to settle in, man. And that's a dangerous, a slippery slope. All right, because of what is it? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get what the scriptures have to say about pride. It's the Book of Sirach, ten and twelve. Sirach ten and twelve. It says, "And being." And the beginning of pride is when one departed from God, when his heart is turned away from his maker. See, the Lord has taken his Holy Spirit from you, and then that is the beginning of pride. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God. All right, that's what, that's when you start to have pride on you, man. That's like that's what lets you know that the Lord ain't dealing with you no more when you start to have that pride on you. All right, that's why it's important to examine yourself, man. When someone else, when then when someone else sees that. You're not supposed to uh, buck up. You're supposed to take heed to it. Because as it is written, man, pride goeth before destruction. All right. Uh, verse 13. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that has it shall pour out abomination. Well, pride is an abomination to the Lord, man. It is, it is 
this uh, discussion. Why the Lord is not delighted. And it says, and therefore the Lord brought a, upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. All right, the Lord hath cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. You know, the meek is someone that's lowly. You know, all right. Well, with that being said, it's a scripture in Sirach that tells us that the Lord has a. Uh, it says many people have worn the crown. Yeah, it's the rock 11 and uh, 5. Let's get that real quick. It's the rock 11 and 5. It says, Many kings have sat down upon the ground, and one that was never thought of have worn the crown. Now, what do you think about when you read that scripture, man? King David. It says, Many kings have sat down upon the ground. Like Saul, he was a great king. He sat down upon the ground. He was put, he was put down. It says, And one that was never thought of, and that one, one that was never thought of have worn the crown. King David was a shepherd. He was the least of his family household. All right, he was a shepherd, you know. He was the least of his brothers, you know. All right, back into second, uh, Sirach 10. Uh, I think that was it. Uh, this is uh, quite slacky. Psalms 12 and 3. Let me go jump to Psalms 12 and 3. Because I wanted to get that about pride, and pride is the beginning of sin when one starts to depart from the Lord. You gotta remember that. You gotta remember to keep that pride off you. And then after you, after you, because after that pride is conceived, man, it starts to be man, it made manifest, it starts to be made known. And after that pride is made known, what happens? You start to start to bug out and do this. This is the book of Psalms 12 and 1. Uh, it's like it. Psalms 12 and 2. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor. Psalms 12 and 1. Help, O Lord, for the ungodly man, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fell from among the children of men. All right, because why? Because um, back in the ancient world, when, when there were wicked kings set up, all right, the, the faithful man, the godly man, were put into prison, all right, for preaching the word of the Lord. They were being removed from their corner. All right. It says they speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speak of proud things. See? That flattering lips, man, making shit, making things easy, smooth, you know, making, making uh, doctrine easy to hear so you can cleave into it, man. You don't, you're not supposed to withhold any, any truth from anybody. It is what it is. See, it says, uh, and the Lord will cut off all flattering lips and with the tongue that speak of proud things. Who have said, let our tongue, let our tongue will we prevail. With our, it's like it, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? See, that's a proud statement, man. And that's what these people, that's the, main, that's the same mindset that these, that these people have today. Who's Lord over us? Who rule over me? I'm in the head. I'm in the head. Me, me, me. I, I, I. All right. All right. It says, for the, oppressor, uh, for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord, and I will set him in safety from him that, from, that puffeth at him. Puffeth, puffeth up means to inflate. So he inflated himself to be something that he's not. All right. He says, the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. All right. So how, what, what word could you possibly say to come against Yahweh by Shem All right. There's nothing. It's nothing that you can say to come against the Lord. That's why Isaiah say this, man. This is Isaiah 2 and 11. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 2. Verse 11, it says, The lofty looks of men shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. See, when you glory in something, man, you're supposed to glory that you know the Lord. As it is written, man, as it is written, that if a man glory, 
glory and knowing that Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, it's the book of uh, First Corinthians, one and the last verse. First Corinthians one and thirty one. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. See, if you're going to be haughty, man, haughty, be haughty in the Lord of his magnificent works and what he has done for us, all right? Be haughty and proud and boast in that. Don't boast in yourself, you know? That's wickedness, man. Or let another man, the scriptures say, let another man esteem thee, man, to, to keep from being proudful, all right? But if you go back to the Isaiah, it said what? To the, the lofty looks of man, let him be humble. All right. Two and eleven. It says, "For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low." All right, and that goes into our people. That goes into uh, two thirds of our people. It goes into Esau, Edom, and all, all the other heathens, man. Because these people are proud, man, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. He's going to get his glory, man. All right. After death by pain. Con. This is uh, Zephaniah 2 and 3. All right. Now, this is the importance of having being meek, all right, and humble. Because it can save your life. Zephaniah 2 and 3. You get two and one. Gather, gather yourselves together. Yeah, gather, gather, O nation, not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid. It may be it, it may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So what's the day of the Lord's anger? The day of Jacob's trouble. All right, for a lab. It says the last that none is like it is even the day of Jacob's trouble. So be meek and be righteous, man, so that you may be hid in the day of adversity or the day of Jacob's trouble. All right. Don't be proud because it says uh, the the the, uh, the it says the uh, the lofty looks of man shall be humbled, man brought low. Don't be that man to have a lofty look. Seek righteousness. Let me get a uh, let me close up with this one. This is Second Timothy, no First Timothy, because I know it's six chapter. First Timothy six and eleven. So thou, O oh man, if you go up a little bit, it speaks about being foolish, man. It says, uh, that they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which have gone down to destruction and perdition. Well, that's talking about money. For the love of money is the root of all evil. But it says this afterwards. Basically, don't be following, uh, wickedness. It says, uh, but thou, uh, 1 Timothy 6 and 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, your faith, love, patience, and meekness. See, that word meekness, that word meekness means to be low, to be lowly. The Lord likes when you be lowly because he wants to be exalted. All right, he want to show his strength through you. Okay? He want to show his strength through you. He want to he wanna, he wanna lift you up, man, you know? The Lord loves the underdog. But if that was uh, uh Proverbs fifteen thirty three and Proverbs eighteen and twelve. Let me get those two and close up. Proverbs fifteen thirty three. Proverbs fifteen thirty three. Fear the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. So before you can actually get respect, or before you are a respected person, all right, before you are greatly renowned, all right, everyone knows who you are, you are, you are humbled, man. You're humiliated. And the Lord want to see how you're going to take that humiliation. Are you going to be humble with it, or are you going to be proudful? All right, are you going to be trying to prove that you're right? Scripture tell you not to, uh, 
Don't just don't don't justify yourself before the Lord. In Sirach the seventh chapter. All right, it says justify not thyself before the Lord. You know, because he know if you're wrong or right. He's gonna know if you, how you gonna take it. How you gonna take being wrong or right? All right. What was the other one I had? That was a good one. I'm glad I wrote that down. Because before honor is humility. Uh, Proverbs 18 and 12. Proverbs 18 verse 12 says, Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. All uh, same thing. All right, but it says, Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. So before you get destroyed for being haughty, you're going to be haughty. So, you know, don't do not do that, man. Because like I said, that is abomination to the Lord. All right, a haughty man. A haughty man is an abomination to the Lord. But it says what? The spirit of a man shall will and stain his infirmity with a wounded spirit. Who can bear it? You know, because the Lord has sent that wound. Who can bear a wound from the Lord, man? Only the Lord can bear a wound from the Lord. All right? He can, he, he can bear a wound from himself. Can't nobody else close up that wound that he set upon you. You know? Hey man, but I hope this lesson was edifying, man. Giving all praise and glory and honor to you. How about Shemi? I was shy about Shemi. I talked about to you, to you, Akim out there. Salutations and um, the water for listening. Hope this lesson was edifying. Until next time, I'm Shalom.